I'm Hazel, and today we're looking at 12 different cool things that are coming to WoW with the upcoming patch 10.1.5. Number 1. Augmentation Evoker. This is a brand new third spec for evokers, centered around buffing other players. It's a bit of an experimental new concept, at least for modern WoW. Ebon Might is your core buff on this spec, increasing your four nearest allies' primary stat. It should prefer DPS. Other buttons in your rotation will extend the duration of your Ebon Might buff. The measure of a good Aug Evoker could well be how much uptime they have on their Ebon Might, and how well they choose who to hang out with, assuming that everyone else isn't throwing elbows trying to pixel stack on top of you. Another cool spell they have is Blistering Scales, that is a buff for your tank. It will increase their armor and give them stacks of exploding scales. If you're targeting an enemy, it will automatically cast on your enemy's target, so no need to figure out who's currently tanking at the time. If you're more a fan of picking one favorite buddy to directly give a buff to, a la Power Infusion, Prescience will directly give that one ally crit and procs copies of their spells. Overall, Augvokers are likely to be in high demand for groups in patch 10.1.5. If you're curious about the spec and you don't have an evoker yet, now is a good time to level 1 to 70. Number 2. The Dawn of the Infinite Mega Dungeon In the grand tradition of mega dungeons like Legion's Karazhan, BFA's Mechagon, and Shadowlands Tazavesh, we're heading into the Dawn of the Infinite to explore different timeways with Chromie and the Bronze Dragonflight. It is once again an 8 boss dungeon and it should be tuned to feel like a challenging 5 player raid. It will be split into two halves for Heroic in 10.1.7 later on, not in 10.1.5, and then both halves will enter the Mythic Plus pool later on for Season 3. One exciting thing that can drop in the Mega Dungeon is this thing, the Quantum Courser. It's a mount that when used will give you a random mount from the past. We don't know exactly what the criteria for how this works are yet, but it certainly looks intriguing. Number 3. Time Rifts at Tearhold Reservoir. This is outdoor content. It looks like something you're going to do perhaps once per week, kind of similar to Researchers Under Fire. You're going to show up at a specific time, it counts down when the next time rift is on your map, do some tasks in a group scenario setting, and then dive into an alternate timeline to fight a boss. There are loads of collectibles you can get in exchange for doing time rifts, as well as item level 402 gear that is just sitting on a vendor for gold on the PTR. If that goes into 10.15, then that is going to be the easiest way to gear up alts that you've ever seen. Time rifts are also the source of these new paracausal trinkets that you can see on these vendors, with interesting effects that should give you some extra power mid-season. Number 4 is Whelp Daycare. Look after whelps, earn some pets. It's a very cute quest line that is worth stopping to read. You're going to do four days of dailies per whelp, and then each whelp also gets its own battle pet in its story, and you get to keep both the whelp and the battle pet as your own companion pets. The whelps themselves do not battle, and after having done these quests, you won't want them to. You're also going to get some flight stones along the way, and a couple of pet charms here and there for small daily quests. This is a refreshing diversion, and a great chance to get to know some new pets beyond just having it be pet number 1616. Number 5, Expanded Warlock Races and Warlock Pet Customizations Coming to the Barbershop. In Patch 10.1.5, Warlocks are now open to every race in the game, so that includes Draenei and Lightforge Draenei. I don't know. Night Elves, uh, Pandaren Warlocks have at it. Additionally, you can now personalize your demon with different skins in the Barbershop after having unlocked them. Inscription should still be relevant there. The patch is bringing some new skins and customizations for Warlock Pets, so you should have some cool options to play around with in the Barbershop. Number 6. Speaking of races, allied race restrictions are being removed. If you have a level 40 character, you can make an allied race alt. No more reputation requirement, and no more questing campaign requirements. This is your moment to embrace the Kul Tirans, the Zandalari Trolls, the Volpera, and the Void Elves. Also, the rest of them. Choose your own adventure. Number 7, for those alts that you've already made and more or less forgotten about, the Welcome Back Gift feature. This is an option for a character in between levels 10 and 60 that has been inactive for 60 plus days. If you choose to do this, it's going to port you to your main city of either Stormwind or Orgrimmar, give you a set of level appropriate gear and equip it for you, clear out your bags, clear out your quest log, and then mail your stuff back to you. Using this is totally optional, so if you have quests that you don't want to lose in your quest log, you are not forced into this feature, but if you just want your messy old alt to be less messy, this is the dream. Number 8 is another nice quality of life change for alts, free and automatic riding training. 
No more 4K-ish gold per alt for fast flying. You're gonna get your slow ground automatically at level 10, fast ground at 20, slow flight at 30, and fast flight at 40. Also, no more need to go back around to a riding trainer to get your training, you're going to get it automatically when you level. If you are leveling alts right now with the Winds of Sanctuary experience buff, consider whether or not you want to pay for the fast flying. It will be free... soon. Number 9 is new mounts and pets to collect. A couple of examples among many, we've got the Scourgebound Vanquisher and Perfected Juggernaut. For pets, there's Doom Rubble, the Obsidian Warwhelp, Gildan. All of those things are actually from the Time Rifts feature, along with tons and tons of transmogs to collect, so there should be lots to keep the collector and you happy. Number 10 is Appearance Tracking. Speaking of collectors and transmog, this is a new built-in feature for budding mog hunters. In your appearance journal, when you're tabbing through, browsing around, looking at all of those delicious things that you don't have, you can now shift-click a thing to track it on the sidebar, like a quest. This currently only works for boss dropped or vendor items, but you can put yourself together a little to-do list and then leave it on your screen to stare at you until you've actually gone and gotten it. Number 11 is the Garrosh Skip. If you have defeated Mythic Garrosh on your account, all of your characters can now skip straight to him to farm the Mount or Tusks of Manoroth or whatever. This is fantastic news. If you are somebody out there that has been saying you will get around to farming the Garrosh Mount or the Tusks of Manoroth eventually, congratulations, you have more or less procrastinated long enough. And number 12 is the Kalimdor Cup and the Drake Racer Silk Appearances. So this is not to be confused with general dragon riding in the old world yet. That was being tested on PTR, but it's not actually coming to WoW until a later patch. But you are going to be able to dragon ride in Kalimdor for these specific Kalimdor Cup races. Doing these is the source of this beautiful new dragon riding themed transmog. So for any dragon race enthusiasts, there's going to be lots of new races to do. Of course, they're going to come in regular, advanced, and reverse versions. You'd expect nothing less. And finally, I'm not going to give it a number because, you know, unlucky, but class changes! There's a ton of class changes coming to WoW in 10.1.5. Mage is one example of a spec getting substantial reworks with some talents being moved around, some being removed altogether, and others getting changed dramatically. I will link the latest full update notes down in the description, so if you want you can scroll down to your class section and read up exactly what's changing for you. But overall, that's a taste of what's coming in 10.1.5. We still currently, as of recording this video, have no patch date, so we don't know quite when it's coming, but, you know, word on the street is soon. Thanks for watching, check out a Twitch stream from me sometime if you like, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.